as scientists, flat earthers, truthers, punks, we're at an incredible disadvantage. We're at an incredible disadvantage. There is scientific consensus on a global earth. There's scientific consensus on evolution. A lot of big they issues. Use the word theory. Big they issues. Use the word theory. Do you know what a, a theory in science is an extremely... And a, fa and a fact let is me, a fact. And a fact let is me, a fact. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Why hello my fellow apes, I hope you're well. A while back I spoke of remaking some of my older videos, as they suffer from primarily poor production quality. Although, I must say, you clever clogs quickly figured out the real reason. Yeah, you got me, it's the beard, if I may call it as much. Anyhow, the first to be remastered is the platitude regurgitated by creationists the globe over, that evolution is just a theory. Big they issues. use the word theory. Now whenever I can, I like to make you suffer a compilation of the sentiment at hand, and so, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go make myself a cup of tea whilst you enjoy an avalanche of scientific illiteracy. I'd say have fun, but uh, you won't. Charles Darwin never thought of evolution as anything other than a theory. He hoped that someday it would be proven by the fossil record, but did not live to see that, nor have we. Evolution is not a science, never has, and never will be. Why? Because it cannot fit within the parameters and parentheses of science for one simple reason. It was never observed. That's why it's not science. That's why it's called the theory of evolution. You know that evolution is just a theory, don't you? At that time, I didn't know that. And we all have seen the consequence over the last 77 years. Evolution not taught as a sincere theory of biologists, but rather, Mr. Speaker, taught as fact. I think schools also ought to be fair to all views because, uh, frankly, Darwinism is not a, an established scientific fact. It is a theory of evolution. That's why it's called the theory of evolution. We've given away the farm to academia uh, needlessly. We've actually permitted the evolutionary theory to control the minds and hearts and dispositions of an entire generation. Now, as far as Charles Darwin is concerned, he never proved anything. He only gave an assumption. And even today, the theory of evolution has no proof. Well, the truth is, it always was a theory, Mr. Speaker. And now that we've recognized evolution as a theory, uh, I would simply and humbly ask, uh, can we teach it as such? And can we also consider teaching other theories of the origin of species? Mm. And while we're at it, can we also consider teaching the theory that babies are delivered by storks? The theory that depression is caused by misaligned chakras? And the theory that planets dictate our personalities? No, no we can't, and for reasons we're about to explore. The claim that evolution is just a theory is often stated as if it's a fatal blow. That's why it's called the theory of evolution. But the irony is that it's actually a tremendous compliment, at least in scientific terms, that is. Let's construct a flowchart of the scientific method and use the germ theory of disease as an example. Our ancestors began with the observation that people get sick and then questioned why do they get sick. They came up with several ideas, such as that witches are casting curses, gods are punishing wrongdoers, and that the air is bad. Now in everyday speech we'd call these ideas theories, but in science we'd call them mere hypotheses. For a hypothesis to become a scientific theory it must undergo several rigorous stages, but before we get to them it's vital to note that when people dismiss evolution as just a theory. You know that evolution is just a theory? Don't you? They're using explicitly the everyday informal definition and not the scientific definition. Okay, let's get back to our flowchart. The next stage is to test a given hypothesis. If witches are cursing people, then we can predict that by getting rid of witches, the rate of sickness will fall. Despite this being an abhorrent experiment, it was nevertheless unfortunately conducted, with, surprise surprise, no reduction in sickness. Because of this and other failed predictions, the hypothesis was eventually dropped and good riddance. The divine retribution hypothesis, that people get sick as a punishment from the gods, predicted that only bad people would get sick. We today, of course, know that this isn't true as both good and bad people get sick, but it's worth noting that there was once relatively compelling evidence in favour of this ghastly hypothesis, since the wealthy, educated aristocrats who lived in spacious and clean environments tended to commit relatively low rates of crime, as they didn't want for anything. 
whereas the poor, who lived in compact and filthy environments in which germs proliferated, committed relatively high rates of crime, as they wanted for much. Thus, there was once the illusion that bad people got sick more regularly than good people. As time went on, however, the divine retribution hypothesis slowly lost favour in the West, but it's still very apparent in the East, in the slightly altered form of reincarnation. Many Eastern religions assert that if a good person is sick in this life, then it's due to their wrongdoing in a previous life. One of the issues with this claim, which is a whole other kettle of fish, is that it's unfalsifiable. There's no way to prove it wrong, but that's for another time. Moving on, unlike the previous two hypotheses, the miasma hypothesis accounted for so much evidence and made so many accurate predictions that it was elevated to the status of being a scientific theory, which is the greatest accolade it could ever have achieved. And this brings me to one of the most important points to be stated. In science, a theory can never, under any circumstances whatsoever, become a fact or law. That's just not how science works. Einstein's theory of general relativity, for instance, has accurately predicted thousands of celestial movements, but it will never become a scientific fact or law. It's already achieved the greatest possible title of being a true and tested scientific theory. It's in first place, there's no going higher. Alright, back to miasma. The theory that bad air causes sickness predicts, for instance, that people in the same environment, breathing the same air, will get sick. And this correlation does indeed occur, as germs require close proximity to proliferate. The cultural and religious practices of purifying temples and cities to clean the air and odours did reduce the infection rate, but not for the reasons they thought. This is an instance of what Brett Weinstein has coined, metaphorical truth. I've actually made an entire video on this subject, should you be interested. Now this isn't the place or time to go into precisely why the miasma theory fell out of favour, but in a nutshell, a competing theory, the germ theory of disease, made better predictions and accounted for more evidence than the miasma theory. And upon the success of Edward Jenner's smallpox vaccine, the germ theory was overwhelming. We've since used microscopes to see germs, and we've identified the precise organisms that cause certain diseases. Unlike the miasma theory, the germ theory has accounted for a lot of the newly discovered evidence. And I say a lot instead of all, as it doesn't account for all sickness, such as cancer. Consequently, we've improved the theory, and we'll continue to do so forevermore. So, a theory in science isn't just some hunch. You know that evolution is just a theory. It's not just a proposed explanation. Rather, it's a rigorous explanation that's been repeatedly tested and verified through the scientific method by scientists all over the world and with all sorts of motives. What's more, a scientific theory not only explains the facts, but accurately predicts discoveries. The theory of evolution by natural selection, which is of course the theory that most often gets dismissed as just a theory, is ironically among the best, if not the best, scientific theory to have ever emerged. For centuries, countless fields of study have indirectly tested and verified it, and in terms of successful predictions, it's second to none. Truly, the predictions of natural selection that have come to pass are breathtakingly extraordinary. Again, this isn't the time to thoroughly defend the theory, but let me just briefly provide three predictions that it got right. Darwin concluded the origin of species by stating, and this always gives me goosebumps, There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into few forms or into one, and that, whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being evolved. And in doing so, he claimed that all species, from humans to bananas, either share one common ancestor or a few. Now in Darwin's time, nearly everyone believed that each species was created in its current form, and so his prediction was deemed quite frankly insane. And yet, he was right. Gene sequencing has revealed that you share a common ancestor with bananas. That's phenomenal. A second discovery that the theory of evolution by natural selection successfully predicted is that, if we're geologically lucky, we find transitional forms of extant species. And again, we did. We're now damn near inundated with them. To consider humans alone, we found Australopithecus afarensis to Africanus to Homo habilis to Erectus. It's oh so easy for us today to shrug these off as just cool discoveries, but to recognise that natural selection predicted them is to recognise Darwin's genius. And as a final example, the theory of evolution by natural selection predicts that some organisms will show signs of previous forms. 
You know, like all vertebrate embryos forming gill-like slits in their throat early in their development, and human embryos having tails. Oh, and premature humans having hair all over their body. Once again, the theory of evolution by natural selection made an extraordinary prediction, and got it right. To date, Darwin's theory has been tested more rigorously and more times than perhaps any other scientific theory in human history, and yet it still accounts for the evidence. It really is the pinnacle of human intellect. The only thing one achieves by hand-waving it away as just a theory is displaying one's scientific illiteracy. Anyhow, if for any reason you'd like to view or commercially use the infographic I made for this video, then please feel free to do so. You'll find it linked in the description. As always, thank you kindly for the view, and an extra special thank you to my wonderful patrons and those of you who have supported the channel via other means. Until next time, my fellow apes. Until next time.